everybody, Joe Joseph here for TheDailySheeple.com, and this is your new shot. IFLScience.com has a awesome piece, Researchers Discover Angel Particle, which is both matter and antimatter at the same time. Now, how cool, how awesome is that? You know, everybody, anybody that knows me uh, knows that uh, every Friday or every other Friday, I get to go on uh, Freaky Friday over at Truth Frequency Radio, and that's where we get into a lot of the cutting-edge science and technology research, experimentation that's going on, and uh, quantum science and quantum physics is something that uh, I'm particularly interested in. And this is, uh, this is amazing. It says a team of scientists have found evidence for an unusual particle that bizarrely is also its own antiparticle. It was first theorized about 80 years ago, but now looks like it might actually be a reality. The findings published in the journal Science were conducted by scientists at Stanford University in California and the University of California. The idea of a particle having its own antiparticle goes back to the year 1937 when Italian physicist Ettore Majorana, who mysteriously disappeared in 1938, by the way, this is about the same time, all around this time period, is when you had a real push um, in the scientific community with regards to free energy. And you had Tesla, who right about this time, he was getting up in age and was starting to go on the downward slide. But he was still around and was very, very prevalent uh, in a lot of mainstream scientific research <clears throat> when it dealt with energy. Um, but you had a lot of people. Antoine Priori uh, was a little bit after this. He was a French physicist who dealt with this and dealing with um, longitudinal EM some of the health benefits of that. Um, but you had a lot of scientists in and around this time that had made major discoveries uh, with regards to the energy that surrounds us, you know, the energy that's in the vacuum itself. And during this time, they made a lot of strides in um, the realm of quantum physics. At this time, of course, it was certainly in its infancy, but amazingly, they made such strides at the beginning of the 20th century onwards till about World War II, and then all of a sudden, it just, the brakes were kind of put on it, and, you know, people were forced to continue to um, use the antiquated method of using coal and uh, archaic means of generating our electricity, and then have it delivered by the same system that Tesla created in the 19th century via alternating current. Now, it says an antiparticle is a particle that has the same mass as a regular particle, but an opposite electric or magnetic property. For example, the uh, electron's antiparticle is a positron. And if the two encounter each other, why they just annihilate themselves? Now, in this research, the team stacked thin films of two quantum materials together and sent an electrical current through it in a chilled vacuum chamber. The top film was a superconductor and the bottom one was a magnetic topological insulator. Now, uh, by sweeping the magnet over the stack, the team was able to modify the speed of the electrons and at certain points, this caused what appeared to be uh, Majorana's quasi-particles to emerge in pairs along with the electron. One way to, one, one was always deflected away so that the flow of the individual quasi-particles could then be measured. So, interestingly enough, the researchers noted that they didn't exactly see the particles. Rather, they saw what was essentially excitations in material that behaves like the particles. So, they didn't, they didn't actually observe the particles themselves. They just saw characteristics that the particles were there. And... To make it even more confusing, the, in the study it says it's not clear if the particles can actually occur naturally. They say it's very unlikely that they actually occur out in the universe naturally, like as part of some sort of random process. Haha, <laughs> which is interesting because that again gives you more evidence scientifically towards there being a creator to this being created to there being a plan, 
So it's very interesting that now science, here's another report, another study out of Stanford University that basically confirms that we live, for lack of a better term, in a construct. And I find that incredibly fulfilling. This is Joe Joseph. This was the DailySheeble.com's new shot. Feel free to comment below and visit our website at thedailysheeble.com. Have a great day.